Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Alex and today I get to tell you about all of the books that I got for Christmas, which I am so excited about. If you saw my subscribers choose my Christmas wish list video, then you already know all of these books, you're well acquainted with them. But that video actually didn't do very well for whatever reason, YouTube just decided not to promote it, so not that many of my subscribers saw it. So if you have no idea what the heck I'm talking about, don't worry because I'm going to be giving a description of each of the books and or series that I got. And I am so excited to dive into these. I got 10 total books. So with that, let's get into it. The first book, or I should say books, that I'm going to talk about are actually part of a series and admittedly for Christmas I asked for the trilogy, but Keaton was so sweet because he knew that this was a heavily anticipated read for me and he got me all four books. That's right, I got all of the books in the Three Body Problem series by Session Liu. I have heard nothing but amazing things about this series and as a massive science fiction fan, I think that this is going to be absolutely mind-blowing. After all, that is honestly the description I hear from people the most all the time, is just how mind-blowing this series is. The last time I was talking about this book, I mentioned that it's set during China's Cultural Revolution, which is true, but the thing that I found kind of interesting interesting is when I first learned about the description of this book, I was going based off of it was either Goodreads or Amazon and they mentioned aliens. Like I knew aliens and different races were a part of this series so I didn't really view that as being like a spoiler or anything, but when I was reading the description on the back of the book, it didn't mention aliens at all. So I'm hoping that I didn't ruin that for anybody else. I can't see how I could have, but in Trying to prevent from telling too much, I think I would rather actually just read you the back of this book, which normally I wouldn't do. I like to kind of give a synopsis by myself, but I think it would be better for me to actually read this to you. So here it goes. 1967, Ye Wenji witnesses Red Guards beat her father to death during China's Cultural Revolution. This singular event will shape not only the rest of her life, but also the future of mankind. Four decades later, Beijing police asked nanotech engineer Wang Miao to infiltrate a secretive cabal of scientists after a spate of inexplicable suicides, which is not something that I had heard about from the other Amazon description at all. Wang's investigation will lead him to a mysterious online game and immerse him in a virtual world ruled by the intractable and unpredictable interactions of its three sons. This is the three-body problem and it's the key to everything. The key to the scientist's deaths, the key to a conspiracy that spans light years, and the key to the extinction level threat humanity now faces. The extinction level threat I believe to be the aliens. I'm so excited. Admittedly, um, I did go ahead and peek at the first few pages just because I wanted to see what the pros are like because this is a translation. I'm not sure if Ken Liu is Sushin Liu's son or not, but if it is, I think that that's actually really cool. I have had issues in the past with translations of feeling like I just don't understand them very well, but in the peaking on page four, there is actually a translator's note. So the fact that those are in here, I really appreciate. So I think that this is going to be a fantastic experience. So those were four out of the 10 books that I received. Up next at number five is Boys in the Valley by Philip Frasassi, and this is a horror novel. This is the story of an all-boys Catholic orphanage, and obviously because it's an orphanage, it means that these boys have lost their families in tragic ways, but they gain community, they gain a sense of family and fraternity inside this orphanage until one night there's this group of men who arrive and one of them is severely wounded. He has his skin completely covered and carved with occult symbols and it sets off a series of possessions inside of the school. The boys who are not possessed have a choice. They can either join forces with this evil demonic spirit and lose their souls or they can try to fight against it and know that that they will lose their lives. I think that this sounds absolutely fabulous. I'm really looking forward to reading this, so this was a great pick. This next book I chose for my wish list because I'm kind of on an octopus kick right now after reading The Mountain and the Sea, and that is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. This is the story of Tova, who has taken a position at a local aquarium to help kind of keep things tidy after she lost her husband. She's an older woman. 30 years ago, she lost her 18-year-old son in an accident, and she never knew what became 
of him, and she strikes up this friendship, if you will, with one of the giant Pacific octopuses named Marcellus. Now, Marcellus is incredibly intelligent, and usually he doesn't want anything to do with people, but his friendship with Tova leads him to want to solve the mystery of what happened to her son. So part of, at least part of this book, takes place from Marcellus's perspective. I fell in love with this idea. Even though I don't know anything about the story, I'm going into this mostly blind, I think that it's going to be incredible. My seventh book is actually a YA horror novel, and that is The Spirit Bears Its Teeth by Andrew Joseph White. And if this cover looks vaguely familiar to you in terms of art style, that is because Andrew Joseph White is the same author who wrote Hell Followed With Us, which was another book that I greatly enjoyed, and that one was a body horror. So I have no idea if body horror is going to be in this book, but we'll see. Andrew Joseph White is a transgender author, so naturally he writes transgender characters. And this is the story of Silas, who was born with violet eyes, which means that he is a spirit medium. And in this universe, spirit mediums have arranged marriages where they become speakers' wives, they're meant to be very obedient, and he tries to get out of this arranged marriage. They ended up diagnosing him with something called veil sickness, which only affects people who were born with violet eyes, and they sent him off to this sanatorium to kind of be reformed, if you will. When he arrives there, there are all these spirits who are trying to talk with him and plead for help, and he decides that he is going to bear all of the secrets of the sanatorium and bring it into the light and let everybody know about the atrocities that are happening there. I know that Hell Followed With Us really surprised me, so I'm curious to see what this book has in store for sure. This next book is one that I normally wouldn't have chosen for myself, but I have just a really good feeling about it. We'll put it that way. And that is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This is the story of Lily, who is a Chinese American in 1950 and she ends up having a chance encounter falling in love with another woman under the neon sign of a place called the Telegraph Club. Lily knows that deportation is looming over her father even though he is a legal U.S. citizen and Kath and Lily have to risk everything for the story of their love and I think that it's going to be a very moving and powerful tale. I'm probably going to learn a lot about what the Red Scare was like in the United States because obviously I wasn't alive during that time. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how enlightening this book is going to be. Okay, I'm down to the last two books. So up next is Under Fortunate Stars by Wren Hutchings. This is the story of five survivors on a freighter known as the Jonah, and they are fleeing a generations-long war with an alien species known as the Felon. But when they flee, they kind of get stuck in this time warp in space, and they're sending out a signal for help, and the crew that come to rescue them are from 152 years in the future. And what's crazy is the crew from the future have actually heard about these five people from the past. They're viewed as heroes in the war. But as the crews start to kind of mingle and talk with one another, the crew from the future realizes that the things that they were told aren't exactly the truth. Any book that you can give me that has this really cool like sci-fi weird time loop bent to it, I'm, I'm interested immediately. So yes, just yes. And up last is another book I normally wouldn't have chosen for myself, but I have been hearing about this book literally everywhere. I can't not hear about it at this point, and I need to know if it's actually as good as people say. And that is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This is the story of Iris Winnow, who is attempting to kind of hold her family together. So her mom is suffering from addiction, and her brother is on the front lines in this magical war with the gods, and he's gone missing. So her only hope at this point is to kind of win this columnist promotion at the company that she works for called the Oath Gazette. Attempting to reach her brother, she writes him letters that she slides under her wardrobe and they magically kind of appear at the front lines, but they never reach her brother. Instead, they get into the hands of a man named Roman Kitt, who is actually one of her rivals at the paper, and he's viewed as this kind of cold and detached individual. Roman decides to anonymously write Iris back, and the story is an epistolary novel, so it's entirely a series of letters, which is my favorite structure of novel. I am a sucker for a really good epistolary novel. And so, of course, Roman is going to attempt to help Iris find her brother, and in the meantime, you know, love may start to bloom and blossom between them. 
as long as it's not just a tropey tropey mess I think that this could be an extremely sweet story. I've also heard that it's quite devastating like it depicts war in a very realistic sense even though this is kind of a magical world so needless to say I'm curious. And with that, those are all of the books that I received for Christmas. I do hope that you really enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it, looking at this stack of absolutely gorgeous novels. I cannot wait to put them on my shelves and I cannot wait even more to actually read them. If you have read any of these books or maybe you're interested in reading them, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening, that you all stay safe out there and I'll see you next time.